All right. What's going on, you guys? Jeremy here with my good friend and client, Mr. Lee Litvin. Uh, he's a music production coach. And in this video, we're going to be breaking down his entire year, month by month, sharing exactly how much money he was making, what he was doing at the time, his problems, bottlenecks, and how he was able to fix those so he could scale from 1K a month to $23,000, nearly $24,000 in the last 30 days as a music production coach. So super excited for this one. It's probably going to be a bit longer because we're going to go into a lot of detail. And I urge you to get your notebook out, take notes and take action on this stuff because we're just going to be peeling, peeling back the curtain and sharing with you everything that went down. So without further ado, Lee, thanks for coming on, brother. Thank you so much, Jay. I'm ready. I'm ready. My energy is high. I'm vibrating at a high frequency. I'm ready to do this, man. Yeah, we're literally just going to talk about before working with you where I was at between January and May, dude, I was doing like 500 to 1.5K a month by myself and yeah, started working with you and uh, got great results. So I'm ready to I'm ready to give to give give the people some really great value today. Amazing. Amazing. And we actually did an interview about a month and a half, two months ago now, maybe. Yeah. Um, so you can check on that one after as well. But uh, this one's just going to be a lot more in-depth, breaking down everything um, so currently for the, just to confirm Lee, these are numbers for the entire year, correct? Like before we started working together, you had run ads, you spent a few grand on ads and stuff like that. And then, uh, this is kind of like, these numbers are reflecting that. So you spent about 17,000, you've made 72,000 cash at a 4.3 X return where you can put $1 in and get $4 and 30 cents out like clockwork day in, day out, month in, month out. And as you can see before, so this, this dotted line here, this is when we started working together. This is when we had our very first call and this is where everything kind of changed. So as you can see, like over here, just like what Lee said, it's kind of around like 500 to 1500 a month and didn't really have much of like a predictable or consistent traffic source. Didn't have a way to get leads. Didn't really have too much clarity around like the offer and the messaging. And we'll dig into this a little bit too, because that was a big component that we worked on in the first couple months here too. Yeah. And then that really unlocked scale up here. But nonetheless, um, you can kind of see like the trajectory of his growth. Here he was just doing everything himself. Didn't really have any systems, didn't really like have much going on. And then all of a sudden just skyrocketed month one, first 30 days, pretty much like what, 6X his business. Seven. Seven well, six six x the business, but in that mm -hmm. month of June, mm -hmm. yeah. my ROAS was seven point seven x in June. Wow, that's yeah. insane. Yeah, and then yeah, if we just kind of follow like take the average line, this is what it's looking like. Yeah. And if you have at least one brain cell, this actually is a really really good thing to see when you're looking at your business um, and the trajectory and where you're heading. So that's amazing, um, Lee. I'm super stoked for you, man, and like. I just want to say as well, like, thank you for being such a, like, engaging member in the community. You're helping everybody else out, like, helping a lot of the other guys that are kind of like, like, just below 10k a month right now, help, help them get to there. And I know a few of them have already um, surpassed that too, as a result, as a result of your help, kind of just like, pulling them along with you. Um, so I just want to say thank you. But aside from that, let's, uh, let's get cracking, man. So um, yeah, do you want to, do you want to kind of talk about what was going on kind of at the start of the year and just kind of paint a, a bit of a picture on what that was like. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, it's my pleasure to serve the community, bro. You already know, like I love doing those calls. It's, it's, it's awesome. So yeah, January to May or yeah, those first few months, mm -hmm. um, I was working three jobs. Two of them were side hustles and one of them was at a coffee shop. So like, I didn't have a lot of money and, uh, I was going between, <clears throat> sending outbound cold DMs because that's like kind of all I could do. And I was trying to run ads, but I didn't know how. So I was running like, I don't know. I don't even remember what kind of ads I was running. And yeah, they just weren't doing well. I was struggling to just get above a 1X return. You know, I was like, couldn't, it was no way I was going to get a two. And I was selling people for 500 bucks three times, like 1500, like payment plans. And I was doing one-on-ones. So it was just, it was hard. Uh, I still have some of those clients to this day. They're still rocking with me, hmm. but you know, it's like, 
you know, just didn't have the confidence, didn't have the results yet, didn't have my messaging dialed. Definitely did not have any predictability. Like it was kind of like if I don't send cold DMs today, I will not get leads. I will not book calls. And you're also even if you were to send more DMs, it's like just not cold DMing is like so much harder to scale than <laughs> than paid ads. So yeah, that's kind of where I was at. I was just like looking at music as a side hustle, but I knew this is what I want to do. I didn't want to have three jobs. And that that was that was where that was kind of where those first few months were at for me. Yeah. And then Let's just kind of like talk about it as well, because I, and I'm going to precursor this. Please don't do this, but Lee booked in a sales call and on the sales call, we had a really, really good conversation. I don't know why, but I just love your energy. I, well, I think I do know why, because your energy is just amazing. But Thank you. Um, I pretty much just like, like gave you some sauce, said, Hey, even though you can't quite afford it right now, go do this. And then come back to me in a month or two um, after you've done it and kind of like, let me know how that played out. And then I, I believe that was in May, correct? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I was in 75 hard. Yeah. I was on my outdoor workout and I was like, I need to meet with you right now. I'm finishing my second workout. Can we meet now? So <laughs> we have that mutual respect that we're both yep. pillars about that. So um, yeah. And you, you sent me a VSL training, like an, something like you sent me some kind of sauce about how to write VSLs mm. and right. you told me about the ads thing. I was like, okay. And then you're like, here's my ad, bro. Like go like model mine. <laughs> and <laughs> from that, that's when I got my first PIF, my first three K someone paid me $3,000 on a call. And I was like, what the fuck? Mm. And it was the easiest close too. like the guy is still that guy, Ryan B he's in now my Ascension offer. Wow. <laughs> like that dude, like <laughs> that dude, like is a savage and he's like my best client. Mm -hmm. Right. And that came from you. So, um, yeah, it was, it was amazing. That's awesome, man. And then, yeah, you just, within like the next 30 days from that call, you did like 8.5. Yep. And then in July, this is when we, this is when you actually joined the program officially. Yes. And yeah. before this, like you had paid me just for some one-off calls. I don't do this anymore. <laughs> um, Lee was the last person I did this with actually. And then I, this is when I really started popping off too, because right. July was my first hundred K month. And when you actually joined the program, Lee, you were the, the one person, you were the last payment that actually made me hit 100.3 K. Yeah, um, yeah. So Sorry. yeah. And then after that, no more kind of one-off consulting calls. Um, but nonetheless, yeah, this is. July was kind of when you join. And then um, like between July and August, we were really just dialing like the messaging. We were really just focused on the messaging, kind of reworking the offer and like kind of restructuring the foundation a little bit in terms of like, okay, who is this for? What's the exact transformation? And how can we, how can we leverage this the most? So that way we can attract people with money and they're going to be a lot more likely to actually want to have a sales conversation with us because our messaging is fully dialed in and a lot more likely to pay higher amounts in full as well. And then it was kind of like, that was kind of part one. And then part two was like, okay, now how do we reflect that into our ads? So um, I believe you're on ad number, like test number 12 or 13 at this stage. Yeah. Well, um, right now, right now my winning, I have two running at the same time. Mm -hmm. The winning, winning one is the 12th, but I'm also testing a 13th. Mm. I can definitely, by the way, speak on the, on the like June to August little period, because that was really scary for me. Cause mm. like June happened and I hit seven X and you know, I, most entrepreneurs, we have the personality of like, we just want to keep going up. Yeah. We, we do not see the long game at all, especially when we're brand new, like I am. And so when, when I see 8.5 to even 7.5, I'm like, eh. and then 7.5 to 5.7, I'm like freaking out. But I'll tell you exactly what it was, Jay, and, and, and everyone watching. So when I started my offer, right, you guys said I do music. So I started with, I help independent hip hop artists become their own music producers because, you know, they say the riches are in the niches. But newsflash, rappers are fucking broke, man. And like, <laughs> I'm talking about like, you guys all say your niches are broke. And I'm like, I don't think you could compete with me because I'd get on calls with people, no BS, $900 a month. They work at Walmart. They're 19 and they have a child. They don't have a credit card. They don't have a computer. I'm like, why are we on the call? Right. It's so like stuff like that. No credit card. I'm unemployed. Now, a lot of that has to do with my marketing. That's not just my fault, but it's, I mean, it's not just on the sales call to do that's my marketing's fault. It's my fault. So 
when I realized that, right, like, so the 7.5 and the mm-hmm. 8.5, like, I had to hustle. I didn't just get a bunch of pips. It was a lot of, like, breakup payment plans, 150 here, 250 here, like, really getting in the freaking mud. Yeah, I remember that, too. In the yeah. snow. And I didn't want to keep doing that, right? And it's it's it was like, okay, I, I know the problem. It's this mm-hmm. hip-hop thing. And it was really hard for me to break away from that because I'm a hip hop artist and that's my, that's my genre that I, that I'm in. But I'm like, but what I teach is not just for hip hop and this is a problem. So the 7.5 to 5.7 was readjusting messaging. Right. And it was like realizing that I was like, Hey, let me, I need to take a step back. Like 5.7 or 7.5 and 5.7. Both of those were still four X return on ad spend months for me. Hmm. Right. They weren't quite seven X. They're not 10 X. So I was still super profitable, but I had to take a step back and like not run ads for a bit, just for a bit, because I needed to like readjust my messaging and figure out who I was as a coach, figure out what my business was about, figure out who I was going after. Cause mm-hmm. that's a whole overhaul of my content too. It's not just, Oh, just change the words on an ad. It's like, I have to readjust my thoughts of who I'm going after. Mm-hmm. So I took that dip, which it was obviously worth it. Cause you see September was 16.5 K and actually from the second week of August to September, six week period was a 20 K week, a 20 K period of six weeks. Right. So mm-hmm. it was kind of that first time I felt like I touched 20 K and I had a, a, a great row as great clients. And that's when I really started to get things dialed and figured out. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, do you want to touch on like, kind of what else you were doing in this stage um, in terms of like uh, team and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. I had hired an appointment setter, amazing person, but truthfully I was way too early in my journey to hire somebody. And I don't just, there's so many things like as a person, you know, I was ready to be a leader, but I wasn't ready to hold people accountable. I was very, very soft and lenient mm. and not to say you should be a tyrant, but there needs to be a level of standards that you already have established in yourself that you just set from the jump so that you don't even have to be a tyrant. I didn't have that. I wasn't, I wasn't hard on myself enough to even be hard on my setter, my team member actually. And also I didn't make enough money. If you guys look at the number 7.5, 5.7, you know, generally appointment setters make between eight and 10%. I was paying 10%. What are they making 500 bucks, 700 bucks? What the fuck is that? How can you expect somebody to be at a level of, of elite when you can't even pay them enough to buy groceries? So it's both of those things. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So it didn't end up working out very well. I take full responsibility for it, which is fine because the person who's working on my team now is a complete killer and I'm a, I'm, I'm at a better level too. So that was wow. a good lesson for me. Yeah. I think that's a great lesson for a lot of people too, because I love what you said there about it's like the standards that we set for ourselves reflect into the business we build, the team that we lead as well. And I know a lot of people expect or just, just have like a weird expectation that like, oh, if I just find this one appointment set or the sales rep or this whatever, they're going to like save my business and like <laughs> turn things around. But that's like, and I've experienced the same thing. It's like, it's so far from the truth and it's boring and it sucks. It's not sexy at all, but that's one of the hard lessons that you got to learn. It's a no brainer. I couldn't agree with you more. I think- mm-hmm. I think just the idea of like, I love that you use the word saved because I felt that too. Mm. And they go hand in hand with what I was talking about with my, with my marketing that uh, I was on a call with Irwin, right? Our obviously right client, your client, your team Mm. member, one of my best friends. And he made me realize the importance of like knowing who you're talking to, because he said, you got to stop saving people. Like my prospects needed to be saved. He goes, you don't want prospects that need to be saved hmm. um, because they need, if they need to be saved, then they're, they're broke. Like if they're stuck, like it's, it's interesting because you want people who are stuck with their certain specific problem, but if hmm. their whole life is stuck and they're just like broke, it's like, well, I can't help you. Right. So that's, yeah. that's, that's really important. That's powerful. And the way I see it is like broke is more of a mindset than yeah, anything. Okay. And I know with my offer, I've said like, oh, you have to be doing at least 5K a month. But like, as we can see right here, it's like, if you're doing less than 5K, it still works. 
as long as you're willing to commit and go all in and just like take direction and take action. Yeah. Right. Whereas like typically people and like there are exceptions to the rule, right? There's gonna be people lower than that, um, like where you were at before, who are just yeah. like you're gonna win regardless, just because you don't have that broke mentality where you're blaming external circumstance. Like you just took extreme ownership of a mistake that you made by hiring a setter too early, right? Mm -hmm. And like, that's a key indicator of like somebody who's going to be very, very successful. Whereas other people blame programs, coaches, courses, team members, you name it. It's everything but themselves. And that's why they stay stuck. Like I've had people say, this is, it blows my mind. I've literally had people not buy because they say it's, it sounds too good to be true. And my client results are too good to be true. Oh, and really? I'm, I, yeah. And like, I'm just sitting here kind of just like scratching my head. I'm like, how is that a problem? <laughs> huh. But like, if you're just doing that and like, you're, that's the story that you're telling yourself in your head that things are too good to be true. And it's like, oh, this worked for Lee, but yeah, but I'm different. And it's like, well, yeah, but you're going to stay exactly where you're at for the rest of your life. Like go get a nine to five at that point. And uh, yeah, but anyways. It's, that's uh, really fucking irritating, man. I'm really sorry. That must have like really grinded <laughs> your gears because it's just like, what do you think I'm lying? It's like at this, that's, yeah. that's so ridiculous, bro. Like that's, that's. Yeah. That's, but I, I mean, like just uh, as what you said there, it's like those kind of people, like they need to be saved because they don't want to save themselves and they're not willing to save themselves. Okay. So yeah, that's another cursor, like another precursor there. It's like, Kind of like uh, the Navy SEALs is like when they're out rescuing like a, a shipwreck, who do they rescue first? Whoever swims the helicopter. Mm -hmm. They're not chasing after people, right? So it's like people people have to be stuck, yes, and in trouble because otherwise, like if we're not solving a problem with our business, what are we doing? We don't have a business. Um, but they also have to be willing to want to be saved. So I like that point that you made about like these guys, like they weren't even close to that. They didn't even really want to be saved. Right. A lot of them. But then now, like what was the shift that you made now that really unlocked, like within the matter of a few months, like you doubled your business from June to September and then like shot up again. Like what was that change in the messaging there? to attract real people, like not yeah. real people, but like not better. people who are ready to go. Yeah. A cu couple of things I would say. Yeah. The first thing is just transitioning away from being so genre specific with my, with, with what I'm doing, hip hop and mm -hmm. whatever. So that was the first thing. But the second thing really interesting actually. And I don't say this to say that everyone should do this. This is just something I did. So mm -hmm. I used to start my ads with the, um, with leveraging going away from pain but now I don't do that. I actually start my ads with going toward pleasure mm -hmm. and then I go away from pain. And um, I also don't like start by identifying a person. Hey, are you a, I don't do that. I just go, Hey, have you always wanted to produce your own music and live out your dreams of having creative freedom? I'm not even saying a person, I'm not calling out a person yet. Um, in my new ad, I am experimenting with it, but the big ad that I'm doing really well, I haven't been. And, mm. um, yeah, so, so <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah, so starting with that, starting with going toward pleasure and then going away from pain mm -hmm. has, has been, I think that's been a big game changer. That's awesome. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to test because <laughs> yeah. like di different niches respond differently, like different audiences respond completely differently to different messages and delivery of the messages too. And mm -hmm. I, I, I'm glad you brought this point up because as we, as you know, I say a lot, it's like the best ads are ads that don't seem like ads. Yeah. And if you're calling out people very specifically, then it comes across quite like an ad and therefore results might not be as, as good as we want. But um, yeah, that's awesome that that was a huge shift that you made as well. Kind of like making that leap here because yeah. it's just such a subtle little thing, but it just unlocks so much scale yeah absolutely and and by the way like that that change like when i made that change 
what, you know, by just numbers. So when I made that change, what I just said, the tour specific, that was like in the second week of August. Mm -hmm. And that was when I went on the 20 K in six weeks period. But the ad itself, that, that first time I made it, that ad only has about a 3.3 X return. So there was something else missing. Mm -hmm. so I had to continue to iterate a bit more. Um, which I did now the ad I'm running now has like probably like above it. I think it's at a, an 11 X return. Wow. Just to add. And I think, yeah, no, November we'll get to it. But mm -hmm. one, one thing I wanted to say that like, it's, it, it kind of really bothers me. Um, I'm not going to call specific people, but like some of the people, when I talk to them in, in the, not everyone in the community, the community is fucking killers, mm -hmm. but like I'll, I'll help dudes with like their appointment setting or like whatever it is. And people are like seeing that my, dms are a lot different i get dms and people come into my dms with a lot more intent and i've even been noticing it recently that mm. when i hit people up hey what's up so and so thanks for the follow how's music the mm -hmm. shit's different now a few months ago like june july they were just like whatever whatever now like people are like oh my god i can't believe you're hitting me up i'm actually like really looking to produce my own music right and mm. i'm like oh great like my combos are like water slide like they're just slipping down and i'm yeah. looking tons of calls so people are like, yeah, well, you know, my message, like, well, I don't know what the excuses they're using. It's just like, well, my messaging is not as dialed as you, or well, I don't know. My DMs are, they're just not as at high intent as you Lee. I'm like, well, I'm on my 12th mm -hmm. ad, bro. Why don't you make 10 more? Like I was yeah. at where you were at like six months ago. You just gotta make more ads. hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent, man. Yeah. That's like, <laughs> yeah. Like literally, I think like two weeks, a week or two ago now. I just launched 10 new ads. I saw that, bro. <laughs> Dude, you've been going crazy. A hailstorm. Yeah. And then guess what? I'm going to do some more probably next week. Totally. And like, yeah. Now, Otherwise, are you calculating? Like, I think I asked you this once, but I'll ask mm -hmm. you again. Are you calculating? Because I used to only run like one ad at a time. So I could right. calculate ROAS on one specific ad easily. And now I'm not. Mm -hmm. And I used to just ask people on the call closing calls. Yeah. Hey, which ad did you see? And and I, I, I like, it's a little awkward, right? So yeah. I'm assuming you're not doing that, <laughs> right? Like you no, have too many ads a, to possibly yeah. know which one. So how are you, how are you going about testing now at this level that you're at? Yeah, it's, that's a great question. It's a little hairy. I will say <laughs> that. But that's what I don't like about this um, specific like strategy. But when you make at least $12 for every one that you put in your business, at this stage, it's, it makes sense. Um, I'm that. also like, it's weird, man. I've really shifted from the perspective of like, like being so anal about every single dollar that goes into an ad and like, oh, this one spent 500 bucks or this one spent a thousand bucks, but like, it's not really like perform as well. It's like, I'm still getting so many eyeballs and I'm still getting the right people coming. And my business is still going up. And like I'm not too stressed about the month to month return where like before when you're starting out, it's like when you're kind of in this stage down here, it's like you're living to survive. Yeah. You're fighting to keep your head above water. Yeah. Now I'm at the stage where it's just like, I've got enough cash in the bank where I don't have to make a sale for the next few years. And, <laughs> <That's sick. laughs> and that puts me in a really good headspace to just spend a ton and not worry too much about the immediate return because i know it takes time for people to go through the funnel right we got the top the middle and the bottom of the funnel it takes time for people to go from here all the way down to here when they pay you money so i'm just like i'm at the stage right now i'm just like growing my audience and i'm just going for like it like three to six months from now mm -hmm. is where I'll really start to see like, okay, are these working? So terrible answer. I know it's, it's like a horrible answer um, in terms of like <laughs> trackability so. and stuff. But at the same time, like it's more of just like a, a long-term mindset shift. And uh, that's kind of like half of the answer from like a high level perspective. And then from like a granular technical level, I can still look at like the numbers, see like, okay, how many people are coming from this ad specifically? What, what's the cost? Stuff like that. So then I can kind of tell. And then also if I find that like the quality dips a little bit, then I go back through the ads and I just analyze them. I'm like, okay, 
what could be what could I be saying in this ad to attract the wrong people? And then I can just kind of like use my intuition almost to kind of pinpoint it. It's like, okay, this one's a lot more direct. It's got financial qualifiers like crazy. Whereas this one is a little bit more broad. Yeah, the cost might be lower, but like the return at the end of the day probably isn't going to be as high. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I can attest to a lot of what you just said. Like the um, the, the idea, like our, the, the, the strategy that we're, this, that we're running here is not, it's not, you don't need to put all that kind of granular attention to it. You really don't. And and at yeah. the end of the day, the difference between, you know, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't matter. You're right. It really, it really doesn't actually, because a lot of it like has to do more with like how much you're charging. That's a huge indicator. A guy who's charging 2K, yeah. 3K, 5K, that's going to affect the ROAS. It's not the ad's fault that you can't mm -hmm. close, right? It's not Facebook's fault that you can't appointment set. That's you. Mm -hmm. So there's other factors that go into it that are uh, more important anyways. And uh, yeah, you know, I think that's to be noted. 100%. That's a really good point too. Cause it's like the ad is just one little piece of the puzzle. Yeah. And everybody's like, Oh yeah. As long as I just like, like you can go to my ads library right now. Like you can go look at my ads and like yeah. copy them and run them, but you People probably won't. Oh, oh. <laughs> and they are. Yeah. yeah. I see them every day. Yeah. Um, which is totally fine, but it's like, it like the different, there's a massive difference between stealing someone's ads and then getting a, like a three X return or doing it properly, building out every single piece of the funnel the right way and getting a 12 X. Yeah. And it's also funny because they're not doing a hundred thousand a month. They're doing 20 mm -hmm. to 30. They're doing what I'm doing. I could fucking do what they're doing. Being a fucking business coach. I'm doing more oh. than that. No, bro. You'd be, you'd blow them out of the water. Cause you've actually, yeah, like, you've actually run a coaching business. They haven't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so that, that's something to be, that's. Yeah. Yeah. That's a whole other thing, but yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I definitely that. a whole other thing. Um, I think but, I think one thing to note just about like my story that people can take, right? Yeah. June, right? Eight point five, awesome month, right? But the mm -hmm. reason that the twenty three point eight happened, bro, is like the from June to November, I've been busting out YouTube's, I've been busting out IG reels, I've been busting out mm -hmm. new ads with constant lead flow, and it's like, dude, I have a guy who booked in a call, okay. Talk to him, I think, in maybe August or September. He's a super cool guy, but he's a teacher. Did not have the money. I'm like, all good. Mm. But he texted me, like, my personal number, because I text these people a week ago. I was like, bro, it's so-and-so. Do you remember me? I'm like, yeah, I saved your number. What's up? He's like, dude, I've been watching your YouTube videos, <laughs> and I really, really, like, want to do this. Do you have any options for me? I'm like, absolutely, bro. Let's book in a call. So we booked in a call. We have the call coming up this coming week. He freaking texted me again. I was, he's like, Hey man, what's up? I'm like, what's up? Well, hey, how are you? What's up? How are you? What's going on? And he's like, dude, I'm so excited for our call. You sure you have options for me? I'm like, yes, let's, let's get you going. He's like, cool. I'm excited for our call. Like he confirmed like four days before, mm -hmm. right? That's coming from nurturing. That's coming from the YouTubes. That's coming from mm -hmm. me dialing in on my YouTube channel and my Instagram content. If you guys want to take a look and get a little fucking masterclass on how to kill it on Instagram reels. Go, go follow me on Instagram. Lazy the gifted. You'll see what yep. the fuck is up. Like I know how to crush these things. And it's because I've, I've taken the time to, to put the fucking work in and, and learn and try mm -hmm. and try and not give up. Yeah. I love that, man. Yeah. I love that. And looking back on like my journey, like first six months of me being in business was like fairly similar in terms of like ups, downs, ups, downs, ups, and like, you can, you can look like I've got a, I think the main video pinned to my channel right now, I actually document the whole 12 month journey mm -hmm. or like eight months going from zero to over 200 K a month. And it's the exact same thing because it's like right here, like you had a problem over here, a traffic problem right here. We solved that. And then boom, you shot up, right? Scale. And then. You hit another problem where you, you like you were fighting to do this. You were working like a dog. You're getting scrappy, right? So then you had a messaging problem. So then it's like, okay, so we scaled. And then now we got to clean up the debt a little bit. We got to fix this other problem. And then we, we fix it here and you scaled hard. And then over here, a little bit of debt, right? Tighten things up, systems. And then you plugged in another 
appointment setter because now you're actually seeing a lot more growth as well, right? And then now you're in another phase of scaling. And then guess what? It's probably going to look like this and then go up again. So it does come in these seasons, like these peaks and troughs. And that's totally normal. Um, But you also, like a big mistake, and then I'll shut up, is a lot of people mess up because they kind of like, they lie to themselves. I've caught myself doing this a few times too, which is why I'm sharing this. But like when you're in that that dip season, building out, a lot of times people are just like, del- like they're delusional. They're lying to themselves, saying that they're doing something that's going to produce results, but they're not actually like sol- like doing anything tangible or actionable to like solve that specific problem mm-hmm. that they have right now. Mm-hmm. They're not actively working to solve it every single day. Mm-hmm. And then they're surprised that they're, they're stuck three months later, six mm-hmm. months later exact same spot and uh yeah it's interesting can i speak on that actually bro i'm so glad you brought that up i i almost so much in my brain i don't know what to speak about what you just said i want to talk about (laughs) that yeah so there is positives and negatives to both like when you have an up 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 month month and when you have a down when you have an up when i've had an up month like it almost Mm -hmm. happened in november Mm mm-hmm when you have a really up month, you know what, you know what you do? You start getting fancy. Yeah. You start wanting to throw your money in all these other places, right? Other coaches, mm. other done for you services. Like you start wanting to go there and like, no, basically what you need to do is just run more ads. If you want to put money towards something other than ads, the only thing I would say to do is like, if you hire out for uh, doing your content, so if you are like a video editor and a thumbnail guy and a social media manager, that's a good investment. And that's actually something I've done. And I'll share with you guys and you like what I'm doing with my content going forward. And then run ads, uh, pay your team members. I fucking bonused out my my team member, Corey, like 100% bonused him out. I was like, bro, first 20K month, like here's an extra 500. It's a no yeah. brainer, bro. We had our first 12K week. I'm like, here's extra 200 for that. You know, so that, that stuff, <laughs> just run ads. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Just run ads and yeah. So, but then when you have the down month, right? Like the 5.7 Ks for me, mm-hmm. start to get scared and you, you don't get fancy. You get desperate. Yeah. You're doing the, you're, you're starting to just do some other stuff that has nothing to do with nothing. <laughs> and you want to feel productive. And you're just, I'm in this, I was in this very desperate mode. I was in this, like just this mode. Right. But mm-hmm. I had a moment, I had a moment. It got fixed in, in August, August 13th. I remember. And uh, I just, I was just like, no, like, just keep going, man. You're going to have these down periods look, look long-term. Mm-hmm. So moving forward now, like now that I'm at this 23.8 K and I want to scale, like, yeah, if I have a dip, it's okay. But basically what I've done now, Jay is like, so my, my video editor, he was just mm-hmm. in, doing my Instagram reels. So now what he does, like we do YouTubes when I do forward facing videos, like talking head videos, mm-hmm. he edits those and I pay him to, I timestamp them. Like I'll watch them and timestamp them. And then he'll chop them up into Instagrams and edit them super like sexy looking for reels. And Mm. now I just hired him to be my social media manager. So we have a social media scheduler. It's called Metricool. It's like buffer or later.com. So I pay him now to do that. So I'm Mm. like, I'm like, I taught him how to do it. It's 500. I'm like, dude, here's 500 a month. We have 45 days of content for Instagram, TikTok, YouTube shorts, everything 60 seconds or less. I'm not going to even make another Instagram reel for the rest of the year. I don't need to. I have them done from my YouTubes and he's like editing them, making them look good and posting them. All I have to do is look and see he didn't make any spelling mistakes. So in terms of my content, like I'm scaling the content by doing what you say, delegate, right? I'm delegating that. Now I can't quite automate it, but I'm delegating it. Now my focus now is learning YouTube. Cause I don't want to just do YouTube. I want to master it and dominate it. So I'm learning YouTube. Mm. I'm paying for thumbnails and I'm trying to get better at my YouTube game. So there's only two things I'm focused on closing deals, AKA objection handling and YouTube. That's it. And obviously ads still a little bit, but that's it. Yeah. I don't care about anything else. Oh, and, and getting, getting ripped, getting ripped with my body, like trying to get my, trying to get in shape. Trying to get back on that. I was way off my game with that this year, but now I'm trying to get back on that. So just sales, YouTube, yeah, ads, and getting ripped. Love that. Mm-hmm. Love that. And I find a lot of people, like, I attract a lot of fitness coaches. Yeah. And 
I love it because they all have the discipline to show up every single day. It's like, like you and I both to 75 hard and we're not afraid of just doing the boring stuff every single day and just waiting a long time. And it has such a big like translation into business as well. So I'm glad you mentioned that too. So yeah. if you're watching this video and you're not prioritizing your health, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. And yeah, you're probably broke still. So yeah. <laughs> Well, dude, I yeah, I won't even go crazy on this story, but like I was just mm -hmm. in the hospital a few weeks ago, right? So talking yeah. about health, it's like that wasn't even me doing nothing bad. That was just some like freak accident. But that made me realize mm -hmm. and reevaluate my top priority is your your top priority is your physical health. That's yeah. like a no brainer. You can't. It's above God, even if you believe in God, which I do. It's like well, you can mm -hmm. believe in God all you want. If you're dead, <laughs> ain't no believing. <laughs> so, like if you're dead because you're over eight and you're you're out of shape. So like. You got to prioritize your physical health and uh, mm -hmm. it all translates. Yeah. I was listening to a podcast like a month or two ago and he, he was kind of talking about this too. He was like, no matter what, what you say, what you try to do, it's like biology wins every time <laughs> we're going to die <laughs> and there's nothing we can do about it. It's just, we can maximize and optimize the quality of the life that we are living while we're living. Yep. So yeah, that's awesome because then it just translates into so much more like energy and focus and honestly just like and mental endurance just keep doing and just do what's required of you every single day. Um, but uh, I do want to be respectful of your time. This has been amazing so far. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you feel like would be really valuable, helpful for somebody watching uh, who's maybe seen stagnation? They're not growing. Um Maybe they're just having massive ups and downs, but it's not like a forward upward trajectory right now. Like any advice you'd give to somebody who's kind of stuck, they, they are lacking predictability, consistency, and they're just not like, they've been working really hard, putting in lots of hours and like committed, focused, dedicated, but they're just not getting the results they, that they're looking for. What would you say to those guys? Yeah, man. Um, Oh, bro, I was starting to, yeah, I was starting to think about my fucking journey, bro. Hmm. Like, I used to fucking drive before we met, bro. I was driving to the fucking coffee shop at like five forty-five a.m. and I just was like, bro, I'm gonna fucking make it. Hmm. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but like, I'm gonna do it. And mm -hmm. bro, before we met, bro, I'd spent fifteen grand just this year. That's not alone, like my whole business journey, like just this year mm -hmm. alone. So between September, 2022 and you and me meeting, I spent 15 grand on coaching that did not work. Wow. And so talk about getting fucking burned. Right. <laughs> so, but I just knew, I was like, I know I'm going to fucking make, it, and I know I'm going to find a coach that's going to help me. I, I don't know if I'm going to do it by myself. And like, bro, every dollar that I make in business, bro, I owe it to you. You're the last I like to. I used to say you were the last coaching program I needed, but I, I it's not. You're the first, because now I'm gonna keep going for coaching. But every coach I have now is not mm -hmm. in the point of I'm broken. I need to figure this out. Now it's like I'm gonna get coached by like guys like you're getting coached by Dan Martell, shit like mm -hmm. that. Like I'm gonna get coached by guys like that or just big dogs, right? Yeah. Because I'm gonna get leveled up higher now, and everything is gonna draw back to you, right? Obviously, yes, I put in the work, and I'm gonna take the credit. <laughs> but like you were the one who gave it to me and you're the last coaching program I'm, I am I needed. Right. So yeah, bro, if you guys are, man, like, yeah, he didn't pay me to say this. Like if you guys are watching this, <laughs> like if you're fucking in the car driving to the job that you don't want to be at and you think you fucking have what it takes and you're a dog, then yeah, hit up Jeremy. But honestly, don't hit up Jeremy if you're not a dog. Cause they don't fucking give him all that objection shit. Like don't, don't do it because you're not a real coach if you do that. A real coach pulls out the card and gives it to him because if you're a coach, if you do that to Jeremy, that shit's going to come back to you when you have prospects, motherfucker. So treat Jeremy <laughs> with some goddamn respect. Realize this guy is the greatest coach in this space. Like you're the only coach in the space, bro. So if you are wow. on the fence, I mean, you saw Alvin. Me and Alvin were in a coaching program together. And he came in and he got his piffs. He's gotten like two within a month of working with you. I'm like, told you, Alvin. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy's the dude. He's like, at first, he's like, I don't have the money to pay Jeremy. I'm like, get the money. 
And then finally he's like, Hey dude, I just paid Jeremy. I'm like, awesome, dude. You're smart. So listen to Lee. Go pay Jeremy Poe. <laughs> <laughs> Man, thanks, Lee. Yeah. And I did I did not pay him no or ask him to say anything like that, just a heads up. But yeah, that means the world to me, man. I really appreciate that. Um, and I really like what you said there too about like, yeah, it's kind of like making that transition from like like playing to survive to now you're in the headspace where you can play to thrive. That's right. And like you said, it's like, I think right now I, I personally have like, I think three, maybe, maybe four coaches mm -hmm. in different aspects. One for leadership one for like team building systems, one for personal accountability, and then one for like client success systems. And then even like a fitness coach too. Um, so there, there you go. But uh, it's like single greatest investment I've ever made. And like literally yesterday, I was doing a lot of reflecting too. I'm like, man, I want to make a big one soon. Like drop like 50K into someone who's doing like eight figures. Just be like, brother, tell me what I need to do. I'll put my head down for the next 12 months. And just fucking work like and the, the thought of that the prospect of that excites me too just like empty the bank account and ads and coaching and just go all in spur my boats like get a little nasty with it again so um but update us when you do that that's 50k investment like i want to know about that yeah or even more like i i don't know i, I don't know how much these guys charge but like i want yeah, I've got a couple guys in mind. I won't say who they are right now um, until I look into that a little bit more. But I, I'm thinking like, because with the what I'm working on right now, I, I think I've got another probably three to four months of like, I know exactly what I need to do to work on the back end right now, mm. rebuilding the program again, like um, client success systems, team, like all that stuff. And then from there, I'll be able to like really just, pour some gas in the fire and just crank it hard on the front end. Um, so I am kind of preparing for that. Like I'm, I think I'm at like a, between Instagram and YouTube, I think right now I'm spending like a grand a day um, on ads. So just like stacking that. And then once I'm ready to actually cash in, it's going to be a big payday. So Makes anyways, sense. that said, uh, I know you got to run shortly, Lee. So I don't want to hang you, uh, or keep you hanging for too much longer, but uh, man, thanks so much for coming on. I'll always, a blast I always love just uh hopping on and, and chatting just kind of hashing it out but uh yeah thanks for sharing your story being so open and transparent dropping so many bombs as well yeah if you're watching this video and you got value from this let us know down below in the comments drop the like destroy the like button um, but let us know down below and then i can see about making other videos like this with some other clients too and then so you guys can get different perspectives and see what's going on what we actually do on the other side and uh how that plays it out but lee thanks so much man really appreciate you and uh yeah any any last words nah it's all good man just book a call down below if you're ready to get get after it <laughs> appreciate that appreciate that yeah and check out the main video on my channel uh before you do um where it breaks down the entire process and program and everything else too so aside from that we'll end her here but uh lee thanks again brother and I'll see you guys next video great